Why, hello there, folks. This is Doc Sigma, and this is a game I've wanted to play with you guys for a very long time. Well, okay, I mean, I'll be playing it, and you'll be watching me play it, so... So, where'd the sound go? Oh, there's the sound. Okay, no, I thought there was no sound for a second. But yes, this is Landstalker, The Treasures of King Knoll, for the Sega Mega Drive. Once again, I'm giving some love to the Mega Drive instead of the Sega Genesis? Why am I playing the European version instead of the American version? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've owned this game. In fact, I'm staring at the cartridge right now, and I own a Sega Genesis, not a Mega Drive, so why the hell am I playing the European version? Maybe it'll be slightly different? Okay, here's a spoiler. It won't be. I've played through the ROM many times, and it's no different, except, except for the whole NTSC versus PAL thing, but... That's a smart people concern, and I'm not smart people, so I don't have to care about that. Oh, speaking about smart people, I am not controlling the character right now. This is the demonstration mode. No, not demonstration mode. That's a terrible thing to call. This is the intro, and th that little dude who's jumping around and doing stuff, pretty soon he'll be using his sword. There he goes. That is Nigel, the protagonist of the game, and the guy who, you, as you could probably guess, he's the guy we're going to be controlling. So, yes, indeed. We got the statue of Gypta. We took the statue of Gypta. As you can see, you can probably tell already just from looking that this is an isometric game. Okay, obviously, that's like saying, hey, look at this blue thing. You can tell that it's blue. <laughs> no, but what I was trying to say was, this is this game really lends itself toward jumping puzzles and block puzzles and picking something up and putting it somewhere else type puzzles. You'll see what I mean. Like, you may have to stack up blocks in a certain way so you can climb somewhere. You may have to put blocks into holes. And now we're giving this guy the Statue of Gypta, and we got 2,000 golds for it. So yes, folks, the hero that we're going to be controlling, our protagonist, is a thief and a treasure hunter. And there's really nothing deeper to him than that. Is He's not trying to save the world or anything. And that's what we're going to be doing in this game. We're going to be looking for treasure. And in just a second, we're going to be meeting some of my favorite villains in video game history. Well, not some of, just one. Just the leader, Kyla. <laughs> Kyla Kozlowski. She's freaking awesome. I love her intro music. It's like all dramatic, and then it gets all silly. Which is exactly what she's like. I mean, she she's the team rocket of this game. She's just this over-the-top, outrageous villain who thinks that she's really powerful and stuff, but is actually completely harmless. And she's in pretty much a, an idiot who thinks that she's awesome and beautiful and stuff. And her two sidekicks share a brain cell, basically. And they're after this fairy named Friday, because apparently Friday saw the legendary treasures or something, so they want to kidnap her so they can find out where the treasures are. And Nigel, being a treasure hunter and just a greedy bastard in general, decides to think for himself, put himself first when he's protecting Friday. He's not doing it to be nice or any nonsense like that. No, he wants the treasure for himself. And he's kind of a sexist, too, because he likes calling her girl. Now talk, and make me a sandwich, you bitch. Oh, fuck off. You didn't even see the treasure? Jeez, oh, why did we waste our time saving you? Jeez. These fairies, man, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. Ugh. Oh, man. But one of the reasons I've been really looking forward to doing this LP is because I've been getting quite a few requests for it, although indirectly. Now, what the hell do I mean by that? Well, I've received... Actually, I've received dozens of private messages from people telling me that they really liked my LP of Soleil, the action RPG for the Sega Master System, also known as Crusader of Senti, the one that I did a while back, 
I got a lot of people saying they really enjoyed that, and they would like me to, if possible, do something similar. They didn't actually request anything specific, they just said I'd really like to see something along those lines. And, well, this is the, in terms of the games that I'm actually aware of, this is the closest I could think of. Now, I guess technically a Zelda game might also be close, but, phew, come on, everybody knows Zelda. I wanted to do something where there's at least a chance you might not have heard of it. Because I don't think Lance Stalker was ever terribly popular when it first came out. I'm not sure. I do remember I had it, but that doesn't mean much. I had the freaking Quattro Adventure Pack, too. God, I think I paid $99 for it or something ludicrous like that. Oh, well. Oh, by the way, I meant to say it. There's so much I want to say and so little time to say it. Earlier on, when I was in that demonstration or introduction dungeon, pay attention to the music, but it's a little too late to say that now that we're gone. Isn't it? Well, if you can remember the music, it's like bum bum bum, bum bum bum. Just try to remember that. We might hear it later in the game. And also, this place I am now, why don't you go ahead and pay attention to that, too? Because you might encounter that later. So, yeah, you're Nigel. You're some sort of elf boy thing. Lifestock. You open up treasure chests by attacking them. You can attack, and you can jump. The A, B, and C buttons map to attack, jump, and then attack again. Just for convenience. I don't know. Let's take a look at our inventory screen real quick. Okay, we can use items that don't have anything to use. Okay. And... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You can also equip stuff, but I don't really have anything equipped except for the basic stuff, obviously. I believe I will be getting all of the equipable items of the game, including some of the optional ones, which are extremely difficult to get. Like the various rings and what have you. Because there's a certain ring, which, when combined with a certain sword, makes the final boss just fucking trivial. Trivial. <laughs> Well, let me put it this way. When you start to get better swords, if you look at the upper left-hand side of the screen, you see that black sword there? Well, as time goes on, that fills up. It's like a meter that slowly fills up. And when it gets fully filled, and you attack, you'll do a more powerful attack, depending on what swords you have. The weaker swords, like you'll basically just do like a normal attack that's slightly more powerful. But then later on, you'll basically will be able to shoot stuff from the sword, kind of Zelda style. But with the final sword in the game, when the meter is fully filled, you will actually cause this earthquake-like effect which damages all enemies on the screen. Now, when you combine that effect with a ring, which causes your meter to fill up three times faster than normal, you can beat the final boss by just running around in circles, waiting for your meter to refill, and just slashing at the air and letting the earthquake take care of him. It just takes a few hits. Speaking of a few hits, oh shit, it's Indiana Jones time. Kiss so a key, kick control. Ah! Oh shit! Well, that was fortuitous. <laughs> oh, I want to go over there. It's a red carpet and dog armor statues and everything, but I'm completely lost control of Nigel right now. I am stuck. Too bad I didn't make that jump earlier. Oh well. <laughs> Okay, come on, game, come on. This is oh, a little faster, thank you. Come on. I don't sense this leading to anything good. Whoa, shit, that was really going fast. It's Mr. Nigel's Wild Ride! Oh, yeah. Okay, not really. And yay, the light of Oh, shit, we're up in the air. Ah, and we're dead. Game over. I've died. Oh. No, I haven't. A little Wookiee slash Ewok has come to rescue me. Oh, my gosh! Oh, man! What in the hell? And okay, we're in bed in a wood log cabin thing with masks on the wall and furry things around me. <gasps> oh god, we've been rescued by furries! No! They're going to try to convert me. Okay, good, now I can move around. So you can jump on people's heads if they're short enough. Jeez, this one's short enough, so I can jump on your head. Jumping on your head, jumping on your head. Okay, never mind. The treasures of King Noel. Okay, for some reason I don't believe you, you lying son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. So I'll see you later. And here we are in town. We'll look around the town later, but for right now... See that statue right there? It's a statue of a pig, or a bear, or a bear-pig hybrid. Anyway, if you can jump on top of that, then it'll cause a treasure chest to appear, which has a life stock in it. And as we know, the life stock increases your health by one, your maximum health by one. Unfortunately, getting up there is somewhat of a bitch. And it's really not based on skill at all, it's based on patience. You have to jump from the dog over here, 
onto this guy's head, and then from this guy's head onto the statue. And it just takes a long time because they move so damn randomly. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and when we pick up next time, I'll already be standing on top of the statue. How's that sound? Sound good? Good. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one, guys, and I really hope you enjoy it as much as I'm going to enjoy it, because I know I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, see you guys next time, and thanks for watching. Cheers!